Hey, that's a good shooting little Jim. Clean a back shot as I've ever seen in my life. Called for another one. That's a shame. He had a full house. You can't win them all. Drinks on in. Those are the meanest, toughest killers I ever saw. Who are they? Well, them's the Slade boys. Didn't you know that? No. We're sure lucky they didn't plug us, too. The Slade boys. I'm sure glad they're riding on through. Do you know where they're heading? I heard him mention a place called Kiowa Flats. Slade boys. Kiowa Flats. <laughs> Remind me to ride clear of that place, will you? Come on, give me a drink. Yeah. A great big tall man? But nine foot tall and half as big around. And the other fella, he's a little bit of a fella? But half as big as his brother. And mean looking? Mean and rattlesnakes. It's them, all right. It's them. Now, Sonny, you get in off the street. Get in the house, you hear me? Keep off the streets. Now go on and get. No sense looking for trouble. Darn thing never was no good no how. They come in. They come in. They come in. They come in, ladies. They come in. They break off. They come in. He's showing good sense. Nobody start nothing. Hey, Oz? Yeah. Let's watch some of the trail list out. It's a good idea, little Joe. <laughs> Howdy. 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 Talking about how well you knew them Slade boys. That's eh? right. That's right. Yeah, just how, uh, just how well do you know them? Sheriff, me and them Slade boys was practically weaned together. I am their bosom friend. Yeah. Well, right. your bosom friends just rode into town. Yeah, my... 
Yeah, yeah, all right. You say that again. Your bosom friends just rode into town. Well, why would those two murderous villains want to come to a miserable hole like Kiowa Flats? Because Alonzo McFadden hired them to kill off all the Hatfield boys, that's why. Oh, that's right. Well, where, 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 where are they now? In the bar. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're terrible. They'll... No, Sheriff, that's the only bar in town. No, 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 Never mind. Of... What do you mean, never you mind? Listen to me. All right. All right. All right. Go to the livery stable. Get a horse. Hire it. Charge it to me. Right. And ride out and tell old Jubal Hadfield not to come into town for quite a spell. Jubal Then when you come back, look me up because I'll need you to identify them two fellas. Oh, right, right. Well, I'll do it right uh, And look, look, look. Look after the bar. Will you look after Yeah, I will. Hey, little Joe. Is there something wrong with me? Do I smell or something? I oh, smell about the same. How about me? About the same. Say, mister. Yes, yes, sir. Is there something wrong with us or something? Oh, no. No, no sir. No, you, you're just fine. Just fine. Bring us another beer. You want another beer? Yeah, this is fine here. Nice day, eh? Yeah. Ain't good enough to drink. Ain't good enough sheep to sheep this. I say it's a nice day, ain't it? Oh, yeah, yes. It's it's fine day. Uh, I mean, it's a nice day. About, a, about as nice a day as we ever had. I can't remember a nicer one. It was, well, maybe back in 47 or 48. I might have had something better. I, I don't remember. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of warm. Well, it's, it's, it's not too warm. Maybe a little on a chilly side. Well, all, any kind of weather's all right with me, so long as it don't bother, bother you none. Yes, it's a nice day. Uh, I don't know. I reckon they ain't used to strangers or something, little Joe. Yeah, so. Let's get out of here. like nobody's here. You know, I don't like this. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, little Joe. I just don't like it. There's something funny about the people around here. Well, I'm too tired to argue about it. Just sign her name and get a room. How am I going to get a room? There's nobody here. Just sign her name and pick one. One with a lock. Hang the expense. <laughs> now they're going upstairs. They're going to stay all right. Oh, did you see the way they looked at me? Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, there was death in them eyes. Sudden death. Oh, I tell you, when, when, when they took that swallow beer and uh, that big one made that face and he looked dissatisfied and uneasy-like, oh, I tell you, I could hear them pearly gates ajar and open. If, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I, I feel considerable shook. As I, uh, I'm a mite shook up myself. Uh, Miss Lona Doon and ladies, if I was you, I'd get in off the streets. It's apt to be a mic dangerous. Be Bannerman Brown. Well, there's some in this town have a sense of duty. If others that ought to ain't... Yes, sir. Now, where are they? They're, uh... Stand aside, B. Bannerman Brown. I, I... Will you get out of the way? Come, ladies. Great. 
jumping Jehoshaphat. Repent, sinners. The day of retribution is at hand. Yes, ma. I reckon it is. Us poor, frail females have come to throw ourselves on your mercy. You've come to do what, ma'am? We want you should spare us our men. Amen. Amen. Well, there ain't enough of them to go around as it is. Amen. Amen. Don't you worry none, ma'am. We, we'll spare you men if, if they're worth sparing. What do you reckon he meant by all that? Beats the heck out of me. Hey. Somebody's shooting at somebody. I think it's us. What did we do? I ain't fine, no, but I'm gonna find out. For this. Sure ain't worth much now. Man, wasn't that good shooting? Well, look, next time we use your neck cloth, please. I just hope there's gonna be a next time. Hey, you in there! Huh? We know who you are and what you're here for. You can die now or later. If you want a chance to make your peace, throw out your gun. Hey, they got us mixed up with somebody else. I sure hope so. Well, why else would they be shooting at total innocent strangers if they didn't have us mixed up with somebody? I don't know. This is Texas, though, huh? Yeah. Well, reckon we better go ahead and do what he says. Throw our guns out and then go out and see what it's all about. Come on. All right. Let's try it again. What are your names? And what are you doing here? We done told you and told you that our names is Cartwrights and we're down here to we're down here to buy cattle. Ants. Go on, boy. Oh. I told you not to lie to me. We ain't lying. Of course you ain't. You just come down here to buy cows. Texas cows. Now who in this right mind is gonna believe? Anybody come down here to buy Texas Longhorns, I ask you. I told you. We're going to take them back up to our, our ranch in Nevada and, and cross them with our own herd so as we'll have a, a hardier breed. And you two are going to drive them cows clean across West Texas, right on up through a hunk of New Mexico, all the way to the Nevada Territory, just the two of you? Yeah, that's what we said. It's a fine lie, gents. A fine lie. It's the kind of noble, inspired lion that does credit to the folks that raised you. But it don't wash out here. Now, I'll tell you who you are. You're them two low-down, gun-slinging, murdering, hydrophobic skunks of Slade boys that was hired by old man McFadden to wipe out us Hadfields because he couldn't do it himself. And then, now look, we never, we never heard of the McFaddens, and we never heard of the, the Hatfields. And that's the truth. Ain't they the living wonders, though? Ants, take them out and do what has to be done. Come on. Come on. Hey, hey, what in time is going on here, anyway? What, what are you fixing to do to these fellas? Kill them? They're the Slade boys. You, you can't do that. You ain't sure they're the slaves. Ain't sure. Ain't sure. 
You see him, don't you? Sure, I see him, but I never see the slaves in my life, and neither did you. He's uh, right there, Pa. Yeah, Freddy, Freddy Boggs, he says he knows him. He says he knows him a long time back in Austin. Oh, twirling? Yeah. Fine. Fetch him in here. Let him identify him, and then we'll kill him if it'll make you any happier. Oh, well, you see, Twirly ain't exactly around right at this moment. Oh. <laughs> Ants, take him out. Come now, on. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Won't do no harm to wait till morning, will it? Where are we going to keep him until morning? Paul, why don't we just stick him in Brown's jail and let him take responsibility for him? You leave me in my jail out of this. Ants, take him out. Come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, all right. Just get somebody to help me get him over to jail, that's all. Jay Bannerman Brown. On your way, on your way. You make sure they're there come on. Or I might just take it into my head to vacate your office. I'm getting sick of you. Well, Joe, I got a funny feeling the law in this town is sure easily influenced. Yeah, all you need is a Navy cope. Oh, uh, you fellas comfortable and happy? I mean, uh, can it get you anything? A bottle of whiskey or a couple of steaks or something? When are you going to let us out of here? Well, tomorrow morning, one way or another. What do you mean, one way or another? Well, if I can find Twirly Boggs and he says you ain't the Slade boys, I'll, <laughs> I'll turn you loose. <laughs> yeah, but what's going to happen if you can't find Twirly Boggs? You get hung. I just about got it figured out. Yeah, what? This whole dang town is touched. Oh, come on. Who ever heard of a whole town being touched? Feller told me one time they got a weed down here and they call it a local weed. When the horses and cows eat it, they get wilder and all get out. Well, so people don't eat weeds. Yeah, but they eat beef, don't they? One of them critters gets all filled up on that there local weed, it kind of salts the meat down, wouldn't it? Yeah, that makes sense. It sure does. Little Joe, you don't reckon they're really going to hang us, do you? Well, I don't know. If they're joking us, they're sure pushing it pretty far. Hang on. Don't blob. Blab. Oh, don't blab. Rescue is at hand. Signed, Black Alonzo, the Red-Handed Avenger. Who do? Even the kids have been affected by that local beef in this town. Good evening, Miss Lorna Doon. Good evening, ladies. I have fetched my tribute. Yes, am I? Uh, I guess as much. Me and the ladies of the town have come to comfort them poor sinners in their final hours. Yeah. Well, the good book says we should forgive our enemies. We are told to bring solace to the afflicted, even though they are a couple of low-down murdering skunks. Yes, my here, uh, here's the keys. Uh, you go in and. Uh, Console them low-down murderers, uh, uh, them <laughs> and poor lost sheep. Me, I got work to do. Good night, ladies. Oh, poor doomed prisoners. It ain't too late. Down on your knees as you face your awful fate. Repent your crimes before that trap is sprung. And you, like a side of beef, are hung. Poor soul. If when you come up close and scooch again the bars, you could kind of rest your poor head on my shoulder. It ain't fair hanging men when there ain't enough to go around as it is. If and you don't mind, I'd like to finish my little tribute whilst there's time. Um, uh, Ma'am? Did you have many more of those? No, just ten or twelve more verses. Well, I didn't have enough time to do a real good job on it. That's a shame. Now your poke is spent, and you can take my word. We'll remember the gent that went riding herd, a-fighting and shooting like desert rats, 
to come to their end in Kiowa Flats. Now toll the bell, their souls are fled. There'll be much more of this, horse. Shh. Them two poor boys are hanging dead. Somewhere their kinfolk will weep and pray. Oh, this is worse than hanging. For them that got heisted up today. Did you really like it? Ma'am, I thought he was prime. Just prime. Well, it ain't often I get a chance to recite my tribute to the dear departed before they're departed. No, ma'am, I don't reckon you do. I suppose you'd like to have it buried with you. Most folks do. <laughs> oh, Clara Lou, stop that noise. I can't help it. There ain't enough men to go around, and here they go, wasting two at the same time. Amen. Amen. It's a woman's place to endure, Clara Lou. Well, I don't mind enduring if I got a man to put up with. Speaking of which, Lizabelle, I notice you've been hanging on to a certain hand half the live long night. Clara Lou Kinsey. Well, I can't help it. She's just a selfish thing, that's all she is. Well, I never. I guess a certain person can hold another person's hand if they choose. Well, a certain person didn't have to choose the way another certain person grabbed onto it. I wouldn't act like such a hussy if I was you, Clara Lou Kinsey. Well, at least I ain't a flipperty gibbet, like some Lizabelle Jones. <laughs> Loose from them pesky females, boys, and get a move on. We're busting you out. And who are you? I'll add the McFadden, you dang fool, the one that hired you. Well, come on. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I want you to meet my friends, my good friends, Big Jack and Shorty Jim Slade. Boys say howdy, my wife Wheezy and my daughter Amanda. Howdy, ma'am, howdy. Mr. McFadden, you're making a terrible mistake. You see, we ain't really... There. Never mind that now, we'll talk in the morning. Hey, but look, M Mr. McFadden, we're... In the duration, how you boys go on and on. Dad burn it, Mr. McFadden, we ain't the Slade boys. You ain't? No, we ain't. That's what we've been trying to tell you all the way in from town. Look, we're the cart, right? What's the matter? You scared? Oh, we ain't scared. And we do appreciate you busting us out of that jail, Mr. McFadden. That burning, if it'd make you feel any better, I almost wish we was the slave boys, but we just ain't. So if, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll just mosey on back. Bye, ma'am. <laughs> First one side don't believe us, and then the other. Yep. We got ourselves in the middle of something, and I don't like it. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, what do you think we ought to do about it? Well, I'll tell you, little Joe. I done been hauled up, hauled down, and threatened with a hanging, and thrown in jail, and busted out of jail, and poetized at, and shot at, and reared halfway across the state of Texas in the dark. I'm going to get some sleep. I don't know what you're going to do. Who are you? Turn him around, little Joe. Yeah. I thought I'd recognize that patch. You wouldn't be Black Alonzo, the red-handed Avenger, would you? I was gonna bust you out. Only Pa and the boys got there first. Yeah, well, just how was you figuring on busting us out? Figured to dig a tunnel. That's a good way to bust out of dungeons. Mm. Yeah, you, uh... You're pretty well posted on things, ain't you, fella? You just bet I am. I'll bet you even know what we're doing here, don't you? Shucks, half the country knows Pa hired you to kill Ann's Hadfield. And, uh, just why are we supposed to kill Ann's Hadfield? He's the fastest gun around here, ain't he? 
None of us McFadden's can hold a candle to him. We gotta get rid of him before we can kill the rest of the Hadfields. Well, how come you gotta kill all them Hadfield? Don't you fellas know anything? It's a feud. He's kind of dumb, ain't he? <laughs> Why, you little... You just touch me and I'll holler for... Black Alonzo, you tell your pa that we hate to leave like this, but we just ain't the slave brothers, you hear? You thank him for busting us out of jail, all right? Go collect the bodies. Hey, Slade boys, on your feet. Look, we're not just. Oh, never mind. I want you two to listen and listen good. I hired you to do a job for me, and last night you tried to run out on your obligations. And a Mr. McFadden... Shut up and listen! I'm giving you fellas a fair choice. Now you can take them guns and do the job you're supposed to. Got another choice. Name your pison, boys. That burn it, Mr. McFadden. Don't you folks ever think any other use for a rope around here? First the Hadfields want to hang us for being the slave brothers. Now you want to do it because we ain't. I'm getting awful tired of hearing that same old tired lie. All right, boys, heist them up. Now hold on just a minute. That burn it, Mr. McFadden. I'm getting sort of tired of being called a liar, too. We ain't the slave boys. All you gotta do is ride into town and look up a feller named Twirly Boggs. Sheriff Brown told us that he knew the slave boys, and he can tell you right quick we ain't them. That's right. All right, boys. If it'll make you feel better disposed to do the work you was hired for, we'll all saddle up and ride into town. We'll look up Twirly Boggs. Take the gun, boys. Thank you. 
jail that can hold them slaves. Yes, I know them, but I know them real good. I went to school with the Aunt Emmeline, see? I tell you, those boys would gouge your eyes out if they thought you looked at them in the wrong way. They would shoot you if they wanted a little target practice. Why, them boys... They... Who's buying, gents? Them boys, they had a man for breakfast every day of their life from the day that they put on long pants. Yes, sir. They had two on Sundays. Never touched me, though. No, sir. They like me. You see, they like me real good. But I, I, I... Oh, come on. Now, somebody stole my drink. Let's have a drink here. I tell you, them two Slade boys is two curly wolves. They have a big wind off in the prairie. They walk in blood, and where they breathe, they leave behind them ruin. Get ready for ruin right now, because here they come. Oh, hallelujah. They look mad. I'm getting out of here. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, help me save the whiskey. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Howdy. Brown, where's Twirly Boggs? Come out of there, Boggs! Wait a minute. Wait, 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 not go massacre and twirly bog now. I ain't never done no harm to nobody. Come here, boss. Yeah, I'm right here. I'm right here. Take a look at these two. Are they or ain't they the Slade boys? Well, uh... Are they or ain't they? You just go right ahead and answer, Mr. Boggs. Tell him the truth. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. Key wrecked. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. Uh, 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 that's fine. Well, uh, 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 you know, that's like boys, all right. I seen a lot of them down in Austin. <laughs> Hi, boys. What's the matter, boys? Don't you know me? I'm Twirly Boggs. <laughs> Remember, uh, I, I, I used to go to school with your old Aunt Emmeline. That doesn't. Take these and do the job you're supposed to. Or you won't be around to taste air come tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot, Mr. Boggs. Howdy, boys. Howdy. Howdy, Mr. Brown. Boy, anybody comes riding into this, they're gonna get slaughtered. <laughs> yeah, they got guns painted in the windows and up on the roofs and whatnot. Yeah. Well, maybe the Hatfields won't ride into town after all. <laughs> They'll ride in all right. They got the news. Seems a terrible shame, don't it? All these folks killing each other. Not a few like this ever get started, Sheriff. Over a hog. Over a hog? Yep, just a plain common, ornery, razorback hog. I, I'll tell you boys all about it, but first I got to uh, <coughs> get a little potation to <coughs> loosen up the vocal cords. I'll tell you the whole sad tale. Come on. Uh, Charlie. Thanks, son. You gentlemen. Care for some more sheep dip? Uh, I mean, beer? Yeah, give us a couple of them. 
beards. Yeah, well, as I, as I start to tell you, Art Dell, see these here Hadfields and McFadden's? They've been slaughtering one another, man and boy, for the last 30 years. Yeah, well, how did the hog get mixed up in it? Well, come on, sit down, boys, I'll tell you. See, Lance Hadfield, he was fattening him a razorback shoat, you see, for his winter meat. Well, one morning, that uh, shoat turned up missing. <laughs> So, uh, so he, uh, got his gun, saddled up, and went out looking for her. Couldn't find her. But as he was passing by the McFadden's cabin, he, uh, pork roasting. So he went in, and according to Natchela, they asked him to stay to supper. And lo and behold, they brought on a great big mess of fresh roast pork. He knew the had you didn't have no pig, so he accused them of stealing his. <laughs> And then the shooting started, and it's been going on ever since, for 30 years. All that killing over one dad-burned old fattening hog. Now, look here, Mr. Brown, you were sheriff then. Now, how come you didn't stop it? Oh, shucks, I, I tried two, three times. But it didn't do no good. See, nobody, nobody pays much attention to me. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting old, or maybe it's just... Maybe it's because I'm getting a little cowardly. I don't know. <laughs> you, uh, you boys don't look so darn old. <laughs> you sure don't look like cowards. <laughs> uh, well, Sheriff, you're not suggesting that we do something about the feud. I mean, after all, we're supposed to be the Slade brothers. Ah, shucks. I know you want gunmen the minute I laid eyes on you. I can tell a killer a mile off aside that Twirly Boggs is the biggest liar in the whole great state of Texas. And that son's just covering a heap of territory. Yeah, well, if you knew, why didn't you say something? First, the first the McFadden's were going to hang us and the Hatfields are going to shoot us? Well, I, you know, I kind of thought maybe I was holding a hand I could draw to. But, oh, never mind. By the way, I uh, snuck your horses out of the livery stable and tied them back in the alley, and your guns is in my office. Sheriff, we sure do appreciate this. Come on, little Thanks, Scott. Thanks an awful lot, Sheriff. It's all right, boys. Hey, Buck. Hey, Buck. Come here, boy. Where, where are you going to that right? I'm going to kill me some headfield. Yeah, even the kids are thinking like that. That yeah, seems like a shame, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, let's go. Come on, who are you joking? That's what I like about us as a family, little Joe. Paul always taught us to never do nothing the others be ashamed of. I'd like to keep it like that. I just wonder if there's anything we can do, like B. Bannerman Brown said. Well, I don't know, but let's try. Come on. You boys change your minds about going? Well, sir, you, you might say we had our mind changed for us. I don't know what we're going to do, but whatever it is, I think we better get started. Hey, listen, you got any ideas, Sheriff? Yeah, got one. Lorna Doon Mayberry. Lorna Doon Mayberry. <clears throat> See, my grandpappy always told me, he always says, says he says, son, you get the women on your side, and the battle's won. Me and my little brother are in a peck of trouble, and, well... Come on. Tell me what it's all about. Come on. Well, first of all, ma'am, there, there's just about to be a bunch of killing out there in that street. There's always killing in that street. Well, yes, I mean, that seems to me like it's a terrible waste. I mean, there not being enough men to go around for all you ladies like it is. There ain't a woman living can keep men from fighting. Ma'am, I beg to differ with you. 
You see, sometimes women folk can sort of get around men folk in little ways. And, and I figured maybe if you ladies tried right hard, you might be able to get around these. You ain't as dumb as you look. What do you want me to do? Hmm? Well, ma'am, here's our plan. We figured if you... Hold your fire, man. Hold it, get that wagon! Hold your fire. Hold it. You get them women off of this street. We're staying right here. Lana Dune, have you lost what few wits you ever had? I got my wits, Jubal Hotfield, and that's more than you can say. Us women got a few things to tell you. And you can start your fighting after you hear this out. All right, ladies. Well, they gotta listen to you. I got something to say. You all know me. I'm Wheezy McFadden. My man's Alonzo McFadden. He's over there behind them barrels and things with the rest of the McFaddens. Alonzo, I want you to listen to me. I can't have no more chilling. But I ain't gonna cook for you, nor wash for you, nor do anything a wife's bound to do for her man till you put down that gun and come out of there. Alonzo, I mean it. I'm Susan Hatfield. I guess you all know who I'm talking to. What Wheezy says goes for me too, Jubal. I won't be the kind of wife I should till you stop this fighting. I'm talking to you, Anne Hadfield. You heard your ma talk, and you heard my ma. You're on one side, and I'm on the other. Here I am, Anne. But don't come after me with a gun in your hand. Boy, you get back here. You hear me? You men want to hear some more? Just a dying minute. What tarnation's going on here? Hey! Confound it, get back here! This ain't no way to run a feud! And it was such a nice day for her, too. <coughs> Hatfield? I'll buy a drink. A drink? All right. I'll accept your offer. And I'll buy another. Fair enough. <laughs> Whiskey. Whiskey. Yes, sir. Lana, that was a mighty fine thing you just done. Lana, 15 years ago, you, you said to me that if I ever... If... I think we done hung around here long enough. We better be just riding on and tending our business, not buying cattle. 
Oh, Hoss, take it easy. A guy has to have a little yeah. chance to relax. Yeah. Boys, here's your hats and here's your own guns. Well, Sheriff, we, we were just beginning to enjoy this town. Yeah, but don't forget the silly heap of folks around here that still think you're the Slade boys. <laughs> now, uh, word to the wise. You've had plenty for today, little Joe. Come on. Jimmy Hatfield, you put it on. Alonzo McFadden, you're a good old sock. Thank you, Joe. The best. Except for one thing. What did I do wrong, Jubo? Bringing in them hired killers to settle a dispute between two Texas gentlemen. I'm ashamed of you. Jubo, I'm a dirty dog. Oh, now, don't take on. I'm a dirty dog. Jubo, this has got to be wiped out in blood. All right. Whose blood? Who do you suppose? Those two dirty, miserable killers that came along into our peaceful little community trying to stir up trouble between us two peace-loving families. That's what I like about you, Alonzo. You think the same as me. <laughs> Let's go round up a couple of the boys, just in case. Hey, how far is the Kiowa Flats? Just a couple of miles back down the road. You don't suppose it? I think so. Come on, let's get out of here. I think so. 